When we talk about Hispanic or Mexican weavings, we're generally talking about those early pieces such as this, which is a classic sotillo serape. And they were made anywhere between about the 1750s to about 1870s. But there was another class of weavings that were made in New Mexico. You have to remember that New Mexico was part of Spain. In fact, it was a part of Spain until 1821, and then it became, with the revolution, part of Mexico and became part of the United States in 1848. So there was a long history in Santa Fe, especially from Santa Fe all the way up to southern Colorado, of making blankets. The earliest people that we know that visited in from Mexico to New Mexico were the Bazan brothers, Ignacio and Juan Bazan, came in 1805 to help with their weaving because the weavings that were being produced in New Mexico at that time were very loose and coarse. Compared to something like this, which is a classic sotillo serape, which was being made, the New Mexico weavings were very poor in quality. So the Bazan brothers worked with the Hispanic weavers in Santa Fe to help them bring up their, their weaving skills. This is an example of a piece that would have been made around the 1890s. This has aniline dyes, as does this blanket behind me. And you can see the Sotillo center is very reminiscent of the other classic blanket. These, this is a piece that was probably made in the 1880s, 1890s, and it has all aniline dyes versus this, which is the classic piece, is all uh, natural dyes because Natural dyes weren't even invented until, uh, synthetic dyes weren't even invented until 1856 when William Perkins found coal tar dyes. Now, after these blankets, which we call Rio Grande blankets, and they're called that because they're made along the Rio Grande watershed, anywhere from Albuquerque to, again, southern Colorado, about the turn of the century, they stopped making blankets that were to be used and worn and traded to blankets called Chimayo or Chimayo blankets. Now the Chimayo blankets are still made today. Often these have designs such as uh, birds and uh, what we call pan-Indian designs. In fact, they were marketed early on as the Chimayo Indians. They were Hispanic weavers, actually, and they didn't use a vertical or aboriginal loom. They used a horizontal or treadle loom. This, this piece right here was collected in, it was made in about the 1870s, and I got it from an individual whose grandmother bought it and around the turn of the century in southern Colorado as a uh, Chimayo Indian blanket though in reality this is an early Rio Grande blanket. So there is mixed cultures that you'll see in these. In fact, when you think of Hispanic blankets, you also see designs that the Navajos used. When they were interned at Bosque Redondo in 1864 to 1868, some of the blankets they got were these Hispanic blankets from the Rio Grande watershed, the Rio Grande blankets, and some of the design elements were transferred into Navajo usage. In fact, you'll see these especially in the later blankets that are the Germantown weavings and some of the eye dazzlers. So when you think of Hispanic blankets, you can think of early Mexican blankets. These are very valuable. And to a lesser extent, the Rio Grande blankets, which are also very beautiful and have value, but not at the same level as a classic Satya Serape.